Today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. If you require a boat that excels in inshore and offshore fishing scenarios, we'll be taking a look at the Seaborn FX25 Bay XE. The stability of this boat made it very easy for me to jump up on the rear casting platform and work around the motor and stand up there very comfortably with the boat rocking. It was really, really cool. For the versatile fisherman looking to comfortably guide his fellow anglers to trophy fish, we'll be taking a look at the Young Gulf Shore 26. The Young Gulf Shore 26 is something you've got to see to understand just how unique it is. And for those looking to venture into blue water and battle bruiser pelagics, we'll be looking at the Sea Lion 27 TE. Sea Lion was smart. There's seats in the bow, but guess what? You can remove them completely out of the boat. All coming up on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Welcome to another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Today we got three incredible boats to look at and I can't wait to get started. This week we're going to start off with the Seaborn FX25 Bay Boat. The versatility of this Bay Boat was incredible. Not only was she set up to go fishing all day long, obviously, but you did not forget about the family. There's still plenty of seating. They even had seating up at the bow, the stern, super comfortable, great day was a great day, but you want to talk about a boat I fell in love with. We've had a lot of unique concepts this year, and the young Gulf Shore 26 is one of them. That boat's got a mile of real estate, okay? Six or eight people in that boat, no problem. It's got a raised station in the back, got that raised helm, and boy, can you see stuff better out of there. There's a lot to love in that Gulf Shore 26. It's a very unique design, Rick. You know, last we're going to look at the Sea Lion 27 TE. Now, this boat really hit home with me, and I'm going to tell you why. One of the things that stood out about this boat to me was a 27-foot single-engine center console used to be the perfect size boat for a guy. We seem to have gotten into really bigger and bigger boats a lot, and this boat brings me right back to the days when that was enough. It was enough boat to get offshore back then, and it's still enough boat to go offshore any day right now. We have three very different boats to look at today. Let's get started. When we return, our hosts take a look at a boat designed for fishing versatility, the Seaborn FX25 Bay XE. But first, let's join our hosts as they discuss Suzuki Marine's unique batteryless electronic fuel injection system in this week's power segment. I'm joined today by Nick Scafidi of Nick's Creative Marine. Nick's a premier Suzuki dealer in South Florida. Nick, tell me a little bit about the technology that Suzuki has incorporated into these portable motors. Well, this is our DF20A carried through from our 99 and 15. And it is the only outboard in its class that can start and run electronic fuel injection with no battery. It does it by using a, a high amperage alternator or stator and a compression relief valve with the pull start so it's easy to start and in one pull this motor is running with no battery. These are all small portable motors which are going to be used on a small boat and obviously the advantage of not requiring a battery is a pretty good advantage for a boat that's going to be that small and that light. Absolutely, we don't have the extra weight of the battery. The motor is under 100 pounds, so it's easy to take from the car to the boat and move around, and it's just simplified. Now, these engines are a lot easier to pull start, too. Tell me a little bit about why that is. Well, Suzuki incorporated a compression release valve. What that does is, on the back of the cylinder, when the cord is pulled, it opens and lets some of the compression out and through the exhaust so that the end user has an easy pull, and that's why it starts so quickly. All very cool points. Nick, thanks so much for joining me today. And if you're in need of a 9.9 .9 or a 15 or a 20 motor that's super light, super easy to start, and doesn't require the use of a battery, you need to check these out. This segment brought to you by Navionics. Escape the ordinary.
Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they take a closer look at the Seaborne FX25 Bay XE. Representing the Bay Boat category, the Seaborne FX25 Bay XE has an overall length of 24 feet 11 inches, a beam of 8 feet 9 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 350. Designed to easily navigate inshore waters and handle the chop offshore, she has a draft of 13 inches, a dead rise of 17 degrees, a dry weight of 2,600 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 68 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Okay, team, we're on the Seaborne FX25 XE, their top of the line model here. All right, we've got a very versatile bay boat. Offshore capable, we got a beautiful day. What'd you have in mind for us today, Rick? Well, we got too many decisions because there's nothing we can't do on a beautiful morning like this. I think we ought to start, George. Let's go hit a wreck and get some live bait. It works in 800 feet of water, it works in eight inches of water, and the boat can do both. All right, let's do that. How about we go hit one of these wrecks right out in front of the inlet? I'm ready. How's that sound to you? George, I'm ready. Put the throttle down and get the air conditioning going because it is hot today. It struck me on the way out today how much bay boats have evolved over the last 25 years. I was in the back of the boat today, rig and tackle. Everything I needed was right there. Today's bay boat comes ready to fish. This one was no exception. Now, before we even got to the inlet, I happened to notice some frigate birds watching something in the water. The boat was quick enough to get on plane, get us under those birds on time to get a bite from some Jack Cravels on a topwater plug. Now I've run one of these boats before and I know how well they handle the chop. We got lucky today and didn't have to deal with that at all. The ocean was slick, calm, and we went right to a bait spot. When we got to the bait spot, this is a really small piece of bottom that was hard to stay on top of. The Optima steering on this boat really made it easy for me to constantly turn the wheel from one end of the access to the other. It was really nice to have it. I love the way the live well were set up and here's the reason why. We had a great big one because we were catching a lot of thread fin herring. But my favorite live bait is a sardine. Well, we got a little live well off to the side to keep for special baits. We can put them right there as we take them off the sabiki. Out there catching bait all morning, I'm not gonna lie, it was a really hot day. We're coming into summer and I kept going up to the bow to the insulated cooler and I love that I didn't have to search for our drinks because there was a divider. You know, when we left the dock, I had no intention of bottom fishing. That's one of the great advantages of a good tackle center. All of a sudden, we wanted to try a bait on the bottom of a wreck. Lori was able to rig me up out of that tackle center. I fired a bait down looking for a grouper or a cobia. Didn't happen this time. There wasn't a lot of action for us there fish-wise, so we plugged in some numbers to a wreck that I know of up the beach a little ways and headed that way in hopes of getting a bite on the bottom. Bingo, the ocean was alive. It was easy to fight the fish there leaned up against the gunnel. That's what I like about a boat that's deep near the stern. Every day the ocean gives you something different. On that day, the ocean gave us a perfect sight fishing day. George hopped up in the tower, which changes everything once you get off the deck of the boat. We were able to cruise the beach, spot fish cruising everywhere, piled onto a big old school of starving jacks. Now the design on this second station was kind of unique. You could either stand on top of the console or jump up and sit with a back bolster and the seated position was really comfortable. It's not necessary to get 20 feet off the water to really increase your visibility. Just standing up on top of that console increases it threefold. As soon as we got on the beach, I noticed right away a bunch of activity and we got into a huge school of Jack Cravels. I was pleased with how easy it was to hop up on that platform and fire a shot into those jacks. George was able to track them perfectly and make it an easy cast right into the lead fish on the school. Bam, he crushed it. All right, so I'm gonna tell you about the beam of this boat. I love a wide beam. My husband always jokes and calls me twinkle toes because I'm kind of everywhere. I was able to turn and cast, no problem. I never felt like I was gonna fall off with my twinkle toes. Now after I got done catching a jack of my own, we had tons of live bait left over, and I wanted a chance to fish this boat inshore a little bit. George was up in the upstairs station, shot us back through that inlet. We were kicked back. Could not have been more comfortable. When we arrived at a spot in the mangroves that I like to fish for snook a lot, this is gonna be a sight fishing environment, and it's shallow water. The boat proved really nimble in that shallow water, and it floated shallow, and getting up in that second station also provided me a vantage point to see the fish if they were up underneath the mangroves. We were looking for snook today. I was up on the bow casting. Didn't get one, but that's okay. It was great though, every time I did lose the bait, having that live well up in the bow, I didn't have to go all the way back to the stern, get my bait and come back out. It was right there. 
Now the snook weren't there that day and the thunderstorms were looming in the distance there and we decided it was time to pull the plug and save that for another day. Well team, I love it when a plane comes together, man. Basically what we set out to do here this morning, it did all of that in spades, what do you say? We caught Cobia today, bait was easy. It was a great day for being offshore. We had no trouble slipping back in the mangroves. Before we get soaked, I tell you that may be your biggest problem with the Seaborne FX 25 XE. You may never want to leave the water. When we come back, our hosts examine a boat designed for the fishing guide in mind, the young Gulf Shore 26. This segment brought to you by FWC, the Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Sorry, it's last minute, but I can't make it. Good luck out there. Hey, honey, heading out of town now. Not sure where I'm going since Mark couldn't make it, but I'll call you when I get back. Northeast wind five to 10 knots, becoming salt 10 to 15 knots in the afternoon. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they check out the Young Gulf Shore 26. Representing the Bay Boat category, the Young Gulf Shore 26 has an overall length of 26 feet 6 inches, a beam of 8 feet 9 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 350. Engineered for both shallow water and blue water fishing, she has a draft of 16 inches, a dead rise of 14 degrees, a weight of 4,500 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 80 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Guys, we've been on a lot of 26-foot boats over the years. We can honestly say we've never been on one like this. It's one of a kind, that's for sure, man. What a perfect layout for having a lot of room, fishing a lot of people, and how do you like sitting up in that raised helm seat? You know me, and you know how much I love visibility on a boat, Rick, and we saw the Young Gulf Shore 22 last year, and I love that design. This is just more of the same in a bigger package. I mean, I'm so excited about getting offshore on this thing today and trying to sight fish some sailfish or anything. I just want to go see a fish. I want to spot a fish from up here first. I like the fact that if you're stepping on a guide boat, everybody has their own seat and you feel comfortable, which you don't get a lot on a guide boat. Listen guys, this boat's got a lot of possibilities. It's a beautiful day. We've got some afternoon thunderstorms to contend with there later on. Let's get after it. Because the Gulf Shore is 26 feet long with a nine foot beam, she can do inshore and offshore very, very well. She only drafts about 18 inches. And I gotta tell you something, she certainly held her own on the offshore scene. The unique design of the Gulf Shore is actually broken up into three distinct separate sections. Let's start at the bow. This is a 26 foot boat. It's a large fore deck that's got enough room for two or three people to stand up on and fish. Having the ability to put two or three people on the front of the boat is really useful. You've got people up there sight fishing, casting the fish that they can see, and also taking directions from the guide who's in an elevated position behind them. Among the space underneath the decks, you're going to see 260 quart insulated fish boxes at the center line. There are two 200 quart boxes for dry storage on the outboard flanks. Also storage for your batteries. The Gulf Shore 26 had a 36 volt trolling motor on it, which pulls the boat around fine when you want to sneak up on fish in kind of shallow water or chasing fish on the beach. Also, your anglers have access to two seven gallon pitch wells that are located all the way forward underneath the deck as well. Having that wide open bow with nothing to trip on made it so easy to catch these sailfish today. Everything was wide open. They really utilized every bit of the beam of this boat. Now moving back into the center section of the boat, you've got a sunken cockpit. Now this is basically used to carry passengers. You know, there's room to stand in there and walk around, but this is a recessed cockpit and it's got two by two individual captain's chairs, LeBrock seats, and there's a row of two in the front and a row of two behind that. Every one of the seats had its own storage facility right under it. I knew what I'd do. I'd pick out my seat, my tackle go underneath it. Wouldn't anybody have to ask me twice for a D-hooker to get their baits off with? Now the rear half of the boat is something that I found particularly useful and this really suits my style of fishing. This is an elevated helm section. The deck is elevated much like the bow, but you've got an elevated riser type of platform with an elevated helm and two seats there, one for the helmsman and one for a rider back there. There's also what looks like, but it's not really, a pulling platform behind you that had a space to mount the radar antenna, which this boat had on it. And you could climb up there and stand and see even better or just sit up there if you wanted to. But basically, you're going to be seated at the helm station on this. 
Now running the boat from this elevated helm position, the visual height advantage is noticeably improved. You're going to be able to see things that there's no way you're going to see from down on the deck. It's going to be much easier for you to spot a fish and point it out to your anglers located on the bow. The space underneath the deck at the helm position is also very generous. You've got a 50 gallon live well in the center underneath your feet at the helm position. On either side of this 50 gallon well, there's a 30 gallon to port and starboard. Three great big live wells right there. And behind the live wells in opposite corners are 200 quart dry storage boxes. When you add up all the storage compartments and live well insulated storage that you've got on this boat compared to boats much bigger than her, it's just incredible how much stuff you can put on this boat. So after fishing on this boat all day, I realized I could not think of a better design to keep six people that comfortable on a boat all day, especially catching the fish that we caught today. Young did it right on this Gulf Shore 26. Guys, what a day. You had me running all over this boat. I was on the bait going back and forth and you guys really killed the fish today. It was so much fun. Trying to see if this boat was gonna stand up in the blue water, man, the thing passed the test. The sailfish were everywhere. They cooperated. We were able to see the things, sight cast to them, and catch a couple. I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. Well, it couldn't. They obviously had never seen it before because they kept coming by to have a look. Yeah, listen, the boat ran great. I mean, everything we needed was on board. It was just, I mean, it's a win-win. You need a good boat for fishing back in the mangroves or throwing in a tail and billfish. The Gulf Shore 26 is one you need to look at. When we return, our hosts examine a boat built for affordable, hardcore offshore fishing, the Sea Lion 27TE. This segment brought to you by Two Rivers Boat Works. Exceptional design, quality, and craftsmanship. Dreaming of transforming your boat into the envy of the fleet? The experts at Two Rivers Boat Works are dedicated to customizing your boat to your specific needs and personality. Specializing in fiberglass and composites repair, professional painting, systems installation, and more. Founded by boating enthusiasts, we understand the enjoyment of being on the water, offering exceptional design, craftsmanship, and quality, so you can spend more time on the water than dreaming about it. Visit our facility in Stewart, Florida, and turn your boating dreams into reality. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts as they take a closer look at the Sea Lion 27 TE. Representing the 27 to 32 foot class in the center console category, the Sea Lion 27 TE has an overall length of 27 feet, a beam of eight feet six inches, and a max horsepower rating of 600. Built to provide comfort when venturing offshore, she has a draft of 20 inches a dead rise of 22.5 degrees, a weight of 5,500 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 220 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts. Okay, gang, we're on the 27 Sea Lion Tournament Edition today. And really, I'll tell you what, I'm excited about this day and I'm excited about this boat, let me tell you why. On the ride out here, I talked to the guys from Sea Lion about something that I've noticed lately. There seems to be a trend towards giant center consoles in the last few years. They just keep getting bigger. And I've said it over and over again, you do not need a giant boat to come out in the blue water and fish. In fact, a 27 foot boat with one engine might be the perfect guide boat and that really appeals to me. I'm super excited about this boat. This is a cool little machine. It is an ideal boat for what we're gonna do today. I was plenty excited walking down the dock to step on the Sea Lion 27 TE. Let me tell you something, this is what we call a fishing boat. It is wide open, it is built to fish, and it's built to do it well. The 27 foot length, eight and a half foot beam, and 22 and a half degree dead rise bottom on this sea lion proved to be very capable in the offshore arena. This boat rode soft, rode dry, I mean ran like a champ. With a single engine, this boat was also very economical. Now, although the Sea Lion is rated for up to 600 horsepower, the boat we ran today was rigged with a single 350. Now, 350 is plenty of power to push this boat. This is a 40 mile an hour boat that also offers 2.7 miles to the gallon fuel economy at 30 miles an hour cruising. I knew what the TE stood for, tournament edition. Here's what you want in a tournament boat. Plenty of real estate. This one you could fish 360 degrees around and plenty of live bait ability. We had that between live wells under the rocket launcher and on the transom. Man, did all 360 degrees come into play in no time. I was putting the initial bait out of the morning and a sailfish took it out of my hands. I missed him, but it wasn't five minutes before we had another one on and jumping. 
As a boat captain who does most of his own maintenance on the boat, I certainly appreciated the ability to get inside the console and reach all of my electrical systems on the console helm panel from a seated position inside there, not really uncomfortable to do that at all. Additionally, under the cockpit deck, there was a very large opening. This compartment opened up and exposed all of your build systems, which could also be easily accessed and maintained without a lot of complication and could be done from a seated position on the deck. A lot of tournaments, you need to be able to carry home a big fish. We had a forward fish box in the deck of the sea lion that would take home the biggest fish you're ever gonna take to weigh in. There's a lot of things to like in a fully closed transom. For one thing, if you've got a bait well back there, it's higher. That means you're not bending over constantly trying to catch bait. It also keeps the boat safer in a following sea if you should get caught in a real big sea. Following the theme of the entire boat, the console and helm face on this boat was super clean as well. The inside of the console was also clean and offered a lot of storage options as well as room for an optional head. Now, because this is a fishing boat, that doesn't mean that you got to take the family and the cruising style away from it. Sea Lion was smart. There's seats in the bow, but guess what? You can remove them completely out of the boat. And so when the family does want to go and go for a little cruise, all you got to do is pick them up and put them on the boat for the day. Very easy. In the transom, you have a bench seat that actually folds back into the transom so you don't see it and everything opens up. Fishing gets slow, pop it up and take a little break. Guys, you said this boat was here to fish today and it did just that. I was on the camera boat when you caught the sailfish and watching you walk around the boat and all the guys having fun, she, she did her purpose today. Oh, Lori, let me tell you, I was trying to come up with one word always try and put a personality to a boat. This boat is clean. Okay, now that don't mean physically clean. It's brand new, it's gorgeous. But there is nothing to trip over. There's nothing to break. This is a seagoing vessel and it is ready to fish. This boat is set up right. A 27 foot boat, in my opinion, is all the boat I need for an offshore boat. And this boat performed flawlessly offshore today. You know, think about it. You can trailer the boat yourself. The boat gets 2.7 miles to the gallon at cruising speed with a single motor, less maintenance on your motor, spending less at the pump, boat looks beautiful, ran like a champ. I mean, what more could you ask for? I'm gonna tell you what, I am convinced in my mind, this boat will always remember me for putting her on that sailfish this morning. There are plenty more with them, and I can tell you the Sea Lion 27 TE is a boat that can handle whatever you're gonna put it through. I told you guys we had three very different boats this week and man did we have a good time and I can't wait to see what's on the docket for next week. I had a lot of fun on all three of those boats, Laura, you're absolutely right. Hey, if you'd like any more information about any of those three boats or any boat you see on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, visit us at floridasportsman.com. Or we'll see you next week on another edition of Florida Sportsman Best Boat.